Hyperion, the top dungeons item of Hypixel Skyblock. But it hasn't always been this way. Let's travel back to the release of Floor 4. July 30th, 2020, Floor 4 was released. This led to things like Bonzo Staff, Frozen Scythe, and Pikmin Sword all being nerfed due to the new magic system. The meta of spamming Bonzo Staff and Pikmin Sword on the Professor was now a method abandoned in the past. But luckily enough, Floor 4 brought us a new weapon called a Spirit Scepter, which unknowingly to all of us would also come to be the fastest clearing weapon in the game. What you are seeing right now is one of my good friends, Unclaimed Bloom 6, outpaced me in clear with a Floor 4 weapon and EU ping. This weapon was very good, but it was one of many of its kind to come. On the other hand, after this, we have the Floor 5 and Floor 6 weapons, but that doesn't really bring us much except Berserker's Gear and Giant Sword, which Giant Sword actually turns out to be a really good archer and left click mage weapon. But before Giant Sword, the options ranged from weapons like a Pigman Sword to a Shadow Fury. Funnily enough, Pigman Sword with Full Superior was my left click mage set two years ago, which is what I'm using in the clip being shown now. Bone Rings, my absolute favorite time of Skyblock. I cannot put into words how fun this class was to play on the first days of Master Mode. When Bone Rings originally first became popularized, it would work all at once so that you could cycle six Bone Rings, a Giant Sword, and either a Edible Mace or a Death Bow to swap right after the Giant Sword. And using this, you would achieve very, very high damage numbers because it would stack all of the buffs together. And this by far was the most overpowered archer setup we have ever seen in this game. But it also took a lot of skill to play as you had to cycle keybinds extremely fast, which led to an influx in macros to achieve the swaps in time. But finally later on sword swap was patched, which eliminated any good use of boomerangs. Now we finally reach F7 release, where Hyperion is unveiled. Hyperion actually used to be way better than it is now, and here's why. Upon release, Hyperion had a bigger range of AoE, and it had no limit on the amount that you could click it. I think you all see where this is going. People figured this out, and began to realize you could actually fully skip the Necron F7 Part 4 boss by auto-clicking Hyperion. Here's a clip of that. <coughs> it was a little bit powerful but it definitely didn't come without a price tag. The main item, Necron's Handle, used to craft Hyperion, was the new most desired RNG. It had a high demand and an extremely low drop chance. <gasps> oh my god, no way! Handle, 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 dude, let's go! Oh, oh my god. Along with this drop, you also had to buy other things like scrolls, and the Wither Catalyst, so Hyperion became a very expensive item that was only for in-game players. As more handles came into the economy, it became a day-to-day -day need for mages to play, and soon, nobody would play with anyone without a Hyperion. This was the new beginning of an RCM era, and it would stay this way for a while. But the next thing that happened was people figured out that Chimera and the Sheep Pet would give ability damage on Hyperion. What was different about this is that Chimera gives you whatever your pet stat is on your weapon, and normally ability damage would not be supposed to scale in dungeons, but in this case it did, which was what made it overpowered. In this case, you could get almost up to two times the damage that you would normally be getting, which is absolutely insane for an RCM weapon that is already that good. But after a while, admins recognized this was way, way too overpowered, and they nerfed it. Now everyone's 2 billion coin hypes sucked, and they ended up even nerfing weather goggles for a bit as well. But this would only be the start of a series of nerfs to come. On Tuesday, March 30th, 2021, Master Mode was released, and oh boy did they want to destroy hype before we went into these floors. They ended up removing 4 blocks of range from hype's radius, taking it from 10 to 6 blocks, which is a huge decrease. But that definitely didn't stop it from being useful. The new meta for M5 was to run 3 tanks that RCM cleared with Hyperion and left mini bosses for the archer to kill. This was an extremely good method, but later I got outclassed. My team ended up getting a world record M5 S plus with that method minus 1 tank replaced with the berserker, and it was very good. And right here is pretty much where hype peaked and then finally we had Ender Slayer release. Personally, out of all the updates that have happened, I would rank Ender Slayer update in the top 3. This update brought us a huge variety of new items and a never before seen difficulty on a Slayer. The new 200mm Enderman would hold the key component for the best master mode weapon soon to come. This Slayer was a grind like no other, 
Most bosses had 1 to 10 mil health on normal slayers, at most, and this slayer had over 30 times that, which was absolutely insane after the strength nerf. This was an extreme grind to get Enderman 7, which was the slayer level you needed to even have a chance of dropping the judgment core. And on top of this, the judgment core had a chance of 0.06%, which is 1 in 1771 bosses. And even now a good boss is around under 1 minute, so that would have meant 29.5 hours of just killing bosses, not to mention the time it takes to spawn them. Finally, after the first judgment cores were dropped, I bought mine for around 580 million and crafted the fourth ever Terminator created. Later on, I would go on to drop four judgment cores before Enderman Slayer 9 too. Here's a really funny clip of one of them. Oh my god! I got four! I got four! I just got core! Oh my god! Yeah, uh, my apologies for the mic there. I got a little bit too excited. But let's get back to the focus of this video. Terminator is now the best clearing weapon. Before this, most bows had a huge downfall, the pullback. But with the Ender update, this was changed. Terminator and Juju were both instant firing bows, which meant that there was no pullback, but now a tiny shot cooldown. And on top of this, it shot three arrows and it had an ability for an overpowered beam. This was extremely powerful in dungeons and put hype right in the dust. Now the dungeons meta changed to a full party of a Soul Eater 5 Terminator clearing classes with one solo main archer that did an astronomical amount of DPS considering all the new changes before this. This was the era of the Terminator, and this 800mm weapon outclassed Hyperion in every way, damage, range, and abilities. This new weapon combined with AOTS Berserker on floor 7 now allowed for a new Necron skip, and here it is. Now today we pretty much stand the same, except for Archer uses a duplex 5 term and boss, and a Soul Eater 5 for clear. But yeah, Dungeons has really just been a series of nerfs, and a new item outclassing the nerf tone later on, if you really think about it. It's almost like there's three waves of balancing, the overpowered release, the continuing demise, and the final replacement. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a lot for me to make this one and get all the facts right. So definitely leave a like if you did. And if you want more documentary type videos like this, definitely let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.